Well, Jay, we're back on a new episode of Review, mm -hmm. and we're here to talk about one of our favorite movies that features tiny monsters running amok. It's 1997 film, The Evening Star, a sequel to Terms of Endearment. You didn't even know that existed, did you? Well, Mike, we're gonna talk about Critters. Uh, and, and a little bit about the sequels, probably more so the second one, and, and not so much the third and fourth one. Um, these, have these movies kind of been forgotten? For the most part, I would say Critters is a forgotten film. Out of curiosity, I clicked on the Rotten Tomatoes score of Critters, and it was like in the 20%. With the really? Splats and that like, low. Siskel uh, and Ebert both really liked it. You know, I like the film for the same reasons you did. Normally what we get are these creatures from outer space coming in, tearing up the people in planet earth and then fighting and see who wins this yeah. film says forget the people pretty much on planet earth let the aliens fight it out themselves well let me let me say this uh i don't talk about critters much uh and we talk about gremlins more gremlins is the gold standard for tiny monster movies yes Critters is somewhere it's, in the it's middle. It's tiered. It's, it's very it's, tiered, yes. It's, it's gremlins, critters, large gap ghoulies, and below that are the really bad ones. Yes. This, this weird little window of time when everybody was ripping off gremlins. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, we should note, uh, supposedly Critters was written before Gremlins, but it was shot after Gremlins had come out and become a huge success. And that certainly shows in the movie because it's not like Gremlins really much at all, but there is a clear influence in, in certain areas of the movie. Yes, yes, in uh, montage sequences. That's in <laughs> Montages of, of little rubber puppet monsters just wrecking shit. But like I was saying, I don't talk about critters much. Uh, one, because I'm embarrassed too, and two, <laughs> It's a good uh, thing we're doing an episode on it. Though. Well, yeah, it's it, it's one of those movies that I watched probably 5,000 times when I was little, it, even to the point where it in, inspired me to shoot my own little rubber puppet monster movies. Okay, and you're with, talking about the first one. I'm talking about the first one. Because what I, I've kind of... Not the second one, interestingly enough. Because I was going to say most people, I think Critters in this aspect is similar to Ghoulies in that when most people think of it, what they're really thinking of is the second movie. I watch Critters 1 so many times to where I recognize like every beat, every line. Really? And yeah. I, wow. I, and then the second one, I watched the second one and I was like, I don't know about this. It's okay. But as an adult, my opinion is completely flipped. Hmm. Uh, the second one is a far superior film. <laughs> but the first one is, it does not hold up, but it, it is very, very... Uh, effective and well done yeah. in for what it was trying to accomplish. Well, it's, yeah, it's it's a B movie. It was made by New Line Cinema in the early days of New Line Cinema when all they had was Freddy Krueger. Mm -hmm. This is pre-Lord of the Rings days. It's a good example of a movie that is clearly trying to ape off the success of a larger movie, but infuses enough of its own creativity where it kind of stands on its own. Because I'm the exact opposite, where I saw Critters 2 a million times as a kid, and uh, only saw the first one maybe once or twice, and then yeah. rewatching it this time, I like them both probably equally, part one and two. But I was watching the first one, like what a what a what a treat, what a delightful little dumb weird B movie it is as an adult watching it. There's so many weird things in it. I would compare Critters One to a, a typical best of the worst like sci-fi movie, where you watch it and you you go. What are you doing? Why are you doing that? <laughs> Not watching Critters, where you watch a best of the worst sci-fi. Yeah. And you're like, oh, God, you're doing everything wrong. You're, 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 you squandered this. You screwed this up. You know, obviously you had no budget, but you fucked it all up. Like a Don Dohler film. You focused on the wrong aspects. Yeah. You've got 20 minutes of people wandering around in the woods. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, a Don Dohler film without the charm is, is a vast number of best of the worst movies. But with Critters, you, you know it's low budget. You know they didn't have much to work with, but they... They took all those elements and they put them all in the right places mm -hmm. and they made a solid little tiny crappy B movie <laughs> that that works on a very simple level. Yeah. With 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 unique um, unique choices and very specifically, um, what I was thinking about was the bounty hunters, right?
In this movie, you have bounty hunters, and they walk around, they have Play-Doh heads <laughs> that glow green, right? <laughs> they, because yeah, they can transform into yeah, anyone that they want. They're essentially at. shapeshifters, and they, they, can, they can look at something and mimic it, which is perfect for being a bounty hunter, because you have to go to alien planets and blend in. Yeah. And so, Even though their generic form is the human body well, shape, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, although what they do show in Critters 2 that they can change that body shape. Yes. Um, and that's very important to note. Um, but the, the bounty hunters, a typical B movie would be two dudes. Nah, we're the bounty hunters. But this throws in that cute little thing where one it, one takes the form of a famous rock star on TV because he's like, that's it. <laughs> What's his name? Like Johnny Steele or Johnny something like Steel, that? Johnny Steele, yeah. And he has a terrible rock song that plays throughout it's the whole a, movie. It's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one, his, his quirk is that he can't really decide. Transform. Nothing likes me. And that leads to wonderful comic moments where he is changing form into characters in the town. Yeah. People are wondering why this priest is running around yes. shooting critters. Well, the, just the fact that the movie has intergalactic bounty hunters in it. Mm -hmm. It's not just, there's these little monsters running around and they're attacking the town. Most of the critter action is focused on the farmhouse. And this is like the other story is the bounty hunters, which could easily wipe them out, but they just have to find them first. So half the movie is them just trying to track them down. Yes. But the idea that the critters are on Earth because they broke out of a, a space prison? They commandeered a ship, these little critters, and they're flying around yeah. the spaceship and they land on Earth. It's two oddball ideas that that don't really fit that well together to me, but in, in, the, con in the whole context, it works because, yeah, critters, you think, okay, it's taking place on a farm. A uh, kid digs up uh, some, you know, frozen eggs in uh, the bottom of a lake that are from prehistoric times that yeah. somehow got preserved throughout hundreds of thousands of years. And they hatch. These are ancient... But for some reason, the critters are intelligent. They can talk to each other, and they're <laughs> fugitives. But really, they're just little balls with teeth that want to eat people. Yeah. They just want to feed. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, they're intergalactic <laughs> space prisoners. <laughs> so those two things don't work at all together. That's the what makes it fun, though. Uh, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. Is, is, is a less creative filmmaking team would say, okay, critters, what do we do? They're, the creatures with mouths, eh, and it digs them up from the ground, and eh, yeah. they, they live in the barn. Yeah. Now they're critters. Critters live in your walls and in the floorboards and uh, they eat your chickens. Yeah. But instead, they, <laughs> they steal a spaceship. So the other, yeah, the other half of the movie is the family. Um, I get a little bit of Tremors vibes with not just the family, but the town. Mm -hmm. You have all the, the interesting little, you got the town drunk that is, is vindicated in his belief in aliens, although he thinks aliens talk to him through the fillings in his teeth. Between he's the first he's two coincidentally movies. vindicated. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and he, he has a nice little arc between the first two movies. And then they keep bringing him back for the third and fourth. Don Opper? Because, well, I looked him up. I was like, who is this guy? Because he, he becomes the, 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 the rock, the base of this entire franchise. He's fucking writing the movies at a certain point. Well, he, he, he has a weird credit on the first one where it's like additional scenes written by. And I was like, what does that mean? Um, but I looked him up because I was like, who is this guy? And he hasn't had much of a career outside of the Critters movies. Uh, his brother is the producer of all the Critters movies. It's like, oh, now it all makes sense. Because he is just worthless in three and four. The writing of the first two make his character work, but he's not like, he's not super funny or charismatic or charming. He works in those first two movies because of the character and how he was written. But he's a side character. He's a side character. He should not be the, the foundation of the entire series. We are series. not going to talk about the cancer that is Critters 3 and 4. <laughs> I mean, we will briefly. We'll I could very not briefly even, mention them. I could uh, not even finish the fourth one. Ugh. Poor Angela Bassett. <laughs> mm, I, uh, and Leonardo DiCaprio. Everyone's got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Kind of a pervert or something. Although I had I had a dream that Scott Grimes and Leonardo DiCaprio teamed up for, for critters. <laughs> Scott the, Grimes is, is uh, what's his face? Um, uh, Brad. Brad. Brad Brown. Brad Brown. Yes, in the in the first and second film. And Scott Grimes is also on the Orville. He's the helmsman on oh, the really? Orville. What happened to your leg? He amputated it while I was sleeping. Ha ha. 
Got you. What? Although maybe it's it's uh, Seth MacFarlane is a secret Critters fan and he just resurrected him <laughs> from from his job at Pizza Hut. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I don't think he's done much, but yeah, yeah he's he's fine on that show. Okay. He's back. He's yeah. back. But I want to see Scott Grimes and Leonardo DiCaprio team up. <laughs> Brad Brown is back. For the ultimate critters, it'll be a, it'll have to be a fan film. This won't be an official release. Well, if you get Leo in it, you're not making a fan film. <laughs> no, if Leo wants in, he can find the financing, Jay. That's true. That's I true. think, I want to make this picture. <laughs> I want to get back to my roots. I want to get back to my roots. I want to pay homage to my very first acting role. We're going to get Martin to direct it. <laughs> it's going to be called Critters. What would we call it? Critters the Return? Critters Bite Back. Critters bite back. How's that? That's not bad, Jay. Okay. That's real good. Critters bite back. Uh, AKA Critters Five. You give a okay. You give a cameo to Angela Bassett. She Angela shows Bassett up. Anyone that's like back. a famous person now. Yes. Brad Dorif, who's in the fourth yeah. one. Yeah. Dee Wallace. Yeah. Yeah. She, she'll come back as Brad's mom. She will definitely come back. Brad has to move his mom into the retirement castle. <laughs> And that's where the critters are. Well, no, because that's what happens in the third movie. It's all just in one building. And oh, it's okay. the most boring thing ever. Well, well, we'll figure out our plot detail later. Leo, call us. Yeah. Call us. I, I know you don't have many choices nowadays for roles, but this is going to be a good one. Uh, the um, mom, though, is played by Dee Wallace. Oh, shit. Billy Zane's back, too. <laughs> This is a, this is a, this is a completely steamrolled D. Wallace to talk about Billy Zane. Well, okay. D. Wallace, hot off E.T., one of the most successful films in the history of motion pictures. <laughs> right to Critters. Right to Critters. Well, she was the mom. I think she was, it was in her contract. She had to play the mom in any 80s sci-fi movie. But yeah, you got D. Wallace in the most successful film in the history of the world. And then you also have Billy Zane, who was in, also in one of the most successful films in the history of the world. Demon Knight? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the only main cast member from Titanic that isn't in any of these movies is Kate Winslet. Unless she played one of the critters. Well, one more thing about the family. Yeah. The daughter, because there's, the, there's, there's Scott Grimes as the younger brother. And April. The older daughter. Is her name April? Mm, I remember all the characters' names oh. from the first one. Okay, that's amazing. Uh, she, one year later, she was in Munchies. Oh, I thought you were going to say one year later she killed herself. <laughs> no, that, that was two years later. Okay. But yeah, just, just she, she taking a, a step down in terms of Gremlins knockoffs. And Jay, you're missing the most important acting role ever. And I don't know if you noticed it, but guess who's in this film? And who? Neelix! <laughs> My favorite Star Trek clown. <laughs> Who's Neelix in this? Uh, he's the, the one of the police officers, the one that gets pulled under the car. That's Neelix? Yeah. Oh. His name is um, uh, Ethan Phillips. Okay. We got to put our cast list together for Critters Bite Back. Is Neelix, is he going to be in it as Neelix? <laughs> it's space related. It is he space can show related. off yeah. as Neelix. Why not? Yeah. A little crossover. A little offshoot. He, he <laughs> little, like a little uh, uh, Shuttlecraft from Voyager lands. <laughs> it's Neelix, and he's on like a solo mission. <laughs> swept up in the plot. It's me, Neelix! And a, a critter flies into his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he's got to fly back to Voyager for emergency surgery mm. after, after like five minutes of being in the film. Yeah. So you can only show a Star Trek character for five minutes or less before Paramount comes after you. Oh, but you can up to five minutes. Up you can five minutes. Okay. So four minutes, fifty-eight seconds. Neelix. That's when he gets a critter down his trousers. All right, sounds good. He eats eats his alien ball sack off. <laughs> you subclass genus. Uh, okay, so, so that, that's pretty much the movie. It's very simple. Uh, once you get past all the weird setup stuff, um, but one of my favorite aspects of the movie is the the extreme excessive collateral damage that's why the blues brothers is the best movie ever made you know I, things I was, recklessly being destroyed I, when when the bounty hunters uh, smash their police car into the church i was thinking <laughs> blues brothers yeah and that, it's very similar to that and then uh well just they're there i mean they are on their missions and they're so like stone-faced and they don't care what gets in their way 
And uh, like I think it's they go to the bowling alley and they don't just open the door. He just rips the yeah, door yes, off. Yeah, the door flies. <laughs> And then, of course, the farmhouse gets completely destroyed. Once well, they actually know where the critters are, they've got those giant cannons, and mm -hmm. they can easily take care of them. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, you're just waiting for them to get to that farmhouse. Well, they gotta they gotta adapt to to human culture yeah. first, and, and which so, they, they, they there's more of that in the second movie too. Yes, which yes. is good. That, and that that that's almost like the heart of the critters movies is the wacky bonnie hijinks hunters. with the bonnie hunters. yeah more so than the critters like like if 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 i were to rewrite a critters you know movie it would be back and forth scenes between bounty hunter hijinks mm -hmm. i mean so they're hunting down the crites and and they even have that like when they get in the cop car there's just like 10 minutes of them trying to figure out how to drive it <laughs> just like, uh, and then they drive it backwards yeah. at first because they don't know what they're doing yeah it's just it's just wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. well that's that, that's why i think the original because this was supposedly written before gremlins I think that probably was the main focus of it was these bounty hunter, bounty hunters trying to get these creatures that have escaped. Yeah. And then they're once uh, gremlins came out, they're like up the up the critters. The critters are fun. I mean, there's more critter action in the second movie. I like the design of the critters. They have a couple of little unique characteristics, but they are what I would think of in a movie called Critters. I think yeah. of things like that. They're the perfect design. Yes. And they introduce something in this movie that never comes back in any of the sequels, which I guess the idea is that the more they eat, the bigger they get. Because there's the one critter that's like human sized by the end of this movie. That's that's completely abandoned in all the sequels. Mm. What is it? What is it? Is it? Dra it's dragging the daughter onto the ship, right? Yes. Which makes me think that the original script, the original idea, they weren't little critters. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about how the original script may have been slightly different. Uh, my thoughts were lizard men. You said space apes. I did. Yes. I, I don't, can we play back the tape? Sure. I think in the original script they were space apes. At the end. For no apparent reason at all, they drag the daughter into their spaceship, which seems bizarre. If they were lizard men who wanted like a lady slave, I'm sure, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But they're just bringing around there for food. I guess, uh, even though they can have easy access to food everywhere. But yeah, she's like a teenage girl. I mean, she's not going to provide much food. Yeah. Like you can just get the big fat guy from town square to get in the car or get in the spaceship or maybe like a cow yeah well that, that's why i think that originally there was maybe something else going on with the with the aliens but sure but having them drag her on the ship at the end is like ah oh, we need something to happen at the we, end. we need some reason for for brad and and um and charlie yeah to to blow them up because obviously be, okay yeah go yeah look the important part is that the entire house blows up and it's glorious <laughs> the icing on the cake for that is the critters just do it just to be mean there's no need to do it They're, and they just laugh well the second film is wonderful um it is exactly what a critter sequel needed to be. Yes. Well, it has more. This is a conversation we're having. <laughs> um, and this is real life. Um, no, no, no. Like, yeah, they, they, they take the, that original film, low budget, you know, a couple of critters here and there, mostly boring, but a couple of funny moments. And then I said, what do people like from yeah. that one? Let's up that tenfold and let's do. And it has a wonderful little, like, kind of framing device with the with the eggs and the Easter. Oh yeah. And yeah, the movie takes place on Easter. <laughs> and and the old grandma lady buys all the eggs from like a junk dealer. Yeah. And then they, they show the critters eggs they're all painted in pastel colors. I mean that's wonderful. Yeah. The chief the new chief of police has to dress up like the Easter bunny. Um, and then yet again they destroy a church. <laughs> Setting the stage for a wonderful uh, a reoccurring thing in all the Critters movies to come. Unfortunately, they didn't follow through with that. Yeah, yeah. It has it has more fun with the the bounty hunter concept and especially the shape shifting concept. Mm -hmm. It's a little weird then when that 
uh, when Lee transforms into Eddie Deason, but he's still wearing the same like sexy version of the outfit of the Bonnie Hunter outfit. It's like that's nightmare fuel. I didn't need to see that. You know? No, it's very disappointing too. I remember being disappointed by this as a kid when it looks like Lee is about to transform into Freddy Krueger. Yes, and they didn't go all the way with it. If they had a little Robert England cameo, that uh. would have been the cherry on top. more critters they're they're a little bit goofier more yep. gremlins like more, yep. um there's the great scene where they're they've taken over the what's it called the hungry heifer Hung, the hungry burger place heifer. oh god that song haunts me from yeah, my childhood it's, it's awful <laughs> they destroy that place everything just gets destroyed it's so great There's so many wonderful little things, and then of course the critter ball is is the big the big thing that everybody remembers. What we learned from this movie is the critters can combine together like Voltron and just be a giant critter ball. That four or five of them combined into a bigger ball at one point. Yeah. And it flew at the farmer with the, with the pitchfork. <laughs> ah! <laughs> he gets the flies back. Um, I mean, it's it's there's there's a lot of one, wondrous wondrous schlock in critters too. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the, the first one, the main climax is in the farmhouse, uh, and then this one. They, they up it, just as a sequel should. They, they take everything that was in the first one and just kind of up it, where you have the whole, whole town trying to take down the critters. Yep, yep. Even, there's even a cameo from Vince Lombardi, uh, who's walking with the crowd, Packers coach. I, I know who Vince Lombardi is. I was unaware he was in a Critters sequel. He was. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Okay. If he weren't dead, I'd say we'd get him back for, for Critters 5. <laughs> for Critters Bite Back? But I think he's long dead now. Oh. Yeah. They couldn't get M. Emmett Walsh back, so they just replaced him with another actor. No, he was in it. No, the sheriff is a different actor. Is it? In the second movie. Yeah. Well, they did a good job replacing him because I didn't notice. <laughs> He looks completely different. He's this old guy. I thought it was a... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not an M. Emmett Walsh aficionado. What are you doing? I don't know my elderly men from the 80s, Jay. I just, I just He's don't. He's still alive, by the way, I know. M. Emmett Walsh. Yeah, I had looked it up. Well, yeah, hey, you know what? Sign him up. Critters 5. <laughs> Critters bite back. We gotta get rolling into Critters 5 before he, before he dies. I want him to be the lead. No. You know how like Lynn Shea, she's in all these New Line Cinema movies, but now she's in her like 70s, but she's the lead of the Insidious movies? Mm. Let's make M. Emmett Walsh. He's going to be the new lead of the Critters franchise. Okay. What about Scott? Scott how, Grimes? He the, can be in it. Here's the premise for Critters 5. Okay. Scott comes back to visit his grandma, who's still alive. Okay. And if that actress ain't alive still, then we got to dig up her bones. <laughs> Or we make an animatronic, an animatronic version of what that. Yeah, the same guys that make the critters, they'll do it. The the Chiodos brothers. Yeah. You know there was a there was a hardcore band called the Chiodos brothers, in the early two thousands. Then they, they there's a band that was named after the guys who did the special effects yes. for critters and killer clowns from outer space. Yeah, they directed that. There one. was a band called Chi the Chiodos brothers, and then they changed their name to just Chiodos. But anyway, they got to make a the Chiodos have to make a puppet of dead grandma. Yes. Grandma is still running her daycare, <laughs> but the but the twist. I'm picturing this like skeleton, yeah, yeah, just like a like a plain white skeleton. The twist is it's it's no longer a daycare. It is a drug rehab center. Okay. And it's all the same kids that were in her daycare, <laughs> all grown up, and they've become methamphetamine addicts in Kansas. <laughs> we got to find all those kid actors. Yes. Every single one, <laughs> regardless of what you're doing in your life, you're coming back. <laughs> and and Nana's getting them clean. Okay. But Nana's also... I thought you were going to say it's a home for the elderly, and that's why M. Emmett Walsh is there. Maybe they're lovers now. Okay. And we have to have this like scene where M. <laughs> Emmett Walsh... Makes out with a skeleton? Yes. yes. <laughs> She's not quite a skeleton. She's just like an like emaciated corpse. She's just like the Crypt Keeper? Uh, yes, yeah. A, a puppet. <laughs> How badly you bad! 
and 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 it, the secret the secret power that his grandma holds yeah is that she's so frail and old the critters have no interest in trying to eat her oh okay she so she's no, like immune she's the one who has to has to go in into the critters lair with a bomb <laughs> nana keep going she's got like an earpiece they in. don't want to eat you <laughs> And Nana falls down and like breaks her hip. <laughs> I'm picturing her; she can't lift the suitcase with the bomb in it, yes. so she's just like dragging it. <laughs> yes. And we have the, the critters have have over the last thirty years have burrowed into the ground and created like an alien's cavern. Oh, and they okay. all they all go in the walls like that. I'm picturing like a like an ant farm almost. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's all under the town, like an ah, ant farm. Okay. Yeah. And so they come up out of nowhere. They eat eat the cows and come back down. That's good. And uh, and Nana has to go down into the caves. <laughs> Maybe the town blacksmith builds like a critter suit. Why they, would she need a critter suit though? No, to oh, go rescue Nana. Oh, okay. Kind of oh, like the plot of the movie is rescuing Nana. Well, towards the end. That, okay. That's that's one of the the later complications is Nana oh. falls and breaks her hip. <laughs> the the bomb is set on a timer. Okay. So they so gotta get Nana out before the they, bomb goes. They out. have to weld together like like a, a, a impervious to critters kind of suit, like the Hulkbuster suit, like or, or like the the bear suit. Yes. Was that the guy that built the suit yeah. so he wouldn't get attacked by bears? Are you ready, Troy? I'm ready. Here it comes. Okay, get on, get on, guys, get on. It's Scott Grimes who's got to go rescue Nana. Mm. Um, and Charlie isn't in the movie at all. No, we're done with that no. guy. Yeah, no. Don Opper. <laughs> out of here out of here i don't even know what happened to him at the end of four i didn't finish it that's that's the biggest takeaway especially in trying to rewatch him is just how i mean the third one the only notable thing about it is that leonardo dicaprio is in it hot off his stint on uh growing pains um but the movie is so boring it's in an apartment complex there's not even any fun critter stuff i think at one point one of them eats some dishwashing soap and like burps bubbles <laughs> yeah it's it's almost like they were trying to like, as stupid as this sounds, take the subject matter more seriously. A little bit, even more so in the fourth one. The fourth one is just like a joyless slog. There's no humor <laughs> at all. No, and um, those characters are, are the characters so are awful. unlikable. The only interesting thing about the fourth one is the cast too, because you got Brad Dorf is in it for some reason. Angela Bassett, poor yeah. Angela Bassett, and then uh, uh, Leo from Twin Peaks is in it. <laughs> Well, and it gets even, you said you didn't even finish it. It gets even worse at the end when Ugg shows up. I don't know why in all the sequels, Ugg is still in the, the form of the rock star, other he than they wanted to get the same actor back. But he shows up at the end, and he is now, for absolutely no reason, a bad guy. I don't know who you think you are, what your game is. And then Charlie shoots him in the head. <laughs> he shoots Ugg in the head, and that's how the movie ends. Yeah, just erase those from existence. <laughs> it's fine. There's nothing redeeming about them. And we'll, we'll revive that spirit when we make Critters 5. Well, there is, I've been hearing, like, for the last year or two, they're, they're working on a Critters, like, like a web show. Yeah. It's going to be like a, a streaming service that won't exist in another year. It's going to suck. It's going to suck. Listen to our ideas. <laughs> Although we got M Emmett Walsh uh, sleeping with the Crypt Keeper <laughs> in underground tunnels. Yeah, but I mean, our cast is is, I mean, it's it's a deal breaker. <laughs> we need we need Leo, we need Scott Grimes, <laughs> and we need Billy Zane and Angela Bassett. Well, Billy Zane dies though. <laughs> well, he comes back. He just has like a scar. Yeah, he has a really bad scar. Okay, it's like Donald Pleasance in Halloween 4, yeah. even though he gets completely obliterated at the end of the second movie. Oh, he's got a tiny scar on his cheek. Right. But they show they show them eating Billy Zane's guts, and then they don't really show him, like, officially dead. Okay. It's just kind of like, So eh. we can bring Billy Zane back. Yeah. All right. He's the blacksmith that there makes the suit. Yes. The critters ate out his guts so horribly that he was paralyzed from the waist down. <laughs> so he builds himself robot legs. <laughs> and he's the town blacksmith. Okay, that works. And, he, and he's walking around at the end like, <laughs> like smashing critters. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to make this happen so we can put a, a, a nice bow on the end of the, the critters saga. Yeah, I really need some closure. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that fourth one. Right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna erase three and four from existence. We're jumping from two to five. Okay. 
We're doing the Halloween route then, where we just Going ignore Halloween. sequels that we don't like. Going okay. full Halloween on, on right. Critters. Um, and I don't know, do the Chiodos brothers still do do puppetry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're still around. I was going to say, if we can't get them, then we'll just have to get the band. <laughs> <laughs> you guys make puppets? <laughs> I don't know, I never made a puppet before. Critters effects by the Chiodos brothers. <laughs>